Hello, welcome to Inflatable Sup Authority, and today we'll be reviewing the Atoll 11. So, who is the Atoll 11 for? The Atoll 11 is a great intermediate to beginner board. So, those who want casual paddling, those who have a little bit of a knack for angling, there's a lot of D-rings to support that hobby. Um, it's even a pretty good board for Sup Yogis as well. You've got a pretty expansive diamond groove deck pad here. And for people who actually want to load this board up with a lot of gear, so as you can see, it has three rows of bungee straps. And with these D-rings, you can also put on big coolers and whatnot. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos of people just stacking this thing with coolers. A few other things that this board is good for, um, besides the casual paddling, the sup yogis and the anglers, is this is a great board for camping excursions as well. Once you learn how to do some solo camping, recommend taking a course for that. Um, it's also a great board for bringing pets along. You can see the board is very durable. It's made of high quality dual layer, dual laminated PVC. And you could even load it up with a small person as well. So like a child, you could try having two adults on here. It's rated for 315 pounds, but the Toll has tested it for 550. One of the main things that the Toll 11 is really good for and something that they market is for hiking excursions. This is a really lightweight board at 19 pounds and the backpack itself is pretty lightweight as well. It doesn't come with wheels, so it's exactly what you need. And it also has these straps as well that are very comfortable to wear. Before we go any further, I just want to say we're right now at Salt Spring Island. We managed to get a little stay at the cottages here. We're at Bullocks Lake, and I'm sure the British people are secretly chuck chuckling. Here's just a quick little tour of the lake here before we go on. Nice little lake. If you're in Salt Spring Island, check it out. So now we'll go over the Atoll 11 specs. So this board is 11 feet long, 32 inches wide, and it's six inches thick. And the maximum capacity, it says on their site, is 315 pounds, but it's been fully loaded to 550. And the liters, so the volume of air that can go in here is 238. So would I buy this as a first board? Yeah, absolutely. It might clock in a little more expensive than the Amazon boards, but I think that this is a great pick. And stability wise, like I'm pretty cautious because it's in the middle of March and <laughs> the water is pretty cold. So I don't really want to fall in. But as soon as I stood on here, like it felt both a stable uh, platform as I've really felt on a paddle board. So yeah, in, in those areas, big thumbs up. The only downside I'd say that I think iRocker, or sorry, that Atoll 11 could use is they could use some mounting points. Just like how Nixie or iRocker have. If you have little mounting points, you could put things like rod holders. So like these boards usually have the mounting points there and then usually right up there. But I mean, it's not, a massive con per se like again there's 15 d rings with this paddle board so you still have a lot of a lot of customizability especially if you got coolers so now we're going to do the nose to tail specs of the atoll 11. so you can see over here there's three rows of bungee deck webbing great for a variety of different things smaller coolers um even like a little chair, some fishing rods. You could put the paddle in there, no problem. And you could see as well, just the logo, which is, I think, one of the best logos in the game. And then this is the deck pad. As you can see, it's diamond grooved. We'll get a really close up look here. Don't mind the dirt. I kind of took a ride on it before I did this. So you can just see, how it's kind of patterned. Zoom out. You can see in the middle, 
you have the carry handle right there, which is actually made of neoprene material. So, and it's also a very lightweight board at 21 pounds. So it's pretty easy to carry around, which makes it really good for hiking. And as you can see, in the middle of the board, there are 15 D-rigs, so six from the start and then all the way in the middle. Just chatting to themselves there. <laughs> and as we come towards the back of the board, this is the inflation valve. This I just have the little ankle leash attached. And this is a rear carry handle along with a little D ring just right at the back. This is what I use for the ankle leash. The Atoll 11 comes in four different colors. This is the Aquamarine, which I think is probably the best looking board, but you have your standard green, army green, which is usually the one that you see in the pictures. There's light blue, and there's also desert sand, which actually, which actually also looks really cool as well. The material of this board is dual laminated PVC. So basically they get a machine press and they press the two layers of PVC together to make it one single strong layer. And then of course it has, just like many other paddle boards, it has a drop stitch core. So usually dual laminated, dual fusion, whatever you want to call it, PVC, is a lot more lightweight than other ones. Like this board is 21 pounds, as opposed to something that's triple layered, like for example, the eye rocker which is 26 pounds, I believe, right off the top of my head. And now we're gonna show you the back of the Atoll board. So as you can see, you have that really cool logo right at the bottom. Nose goes all the way around. It's nicely, it has a nice little hybrid touring profile, which I really appreciate. It has a bit of a nose rocker. So I noticed when I was paddling, the nose just goes right through the water. It doesn't cut through it, but it also doesn't plow it like other brands, like for example, Serene Life. So we go through, there's a, another little logo and it tells you the specs right there. And then these are the fins. So these are basically glued on there. Oh, there's a little mosquito there. So these stay attached to the board. I think they're about four inches. And then this is the fin that is detachable, which is at about eight inches. We'll just get a little zoom in. This is FCS make, which means that you can exchange the fins to different makes. So if you want to put a little bendable river fin in there, if you want to put a racing fin, you can easily just interchange them. Another great thing about FCS fins is the fact that you don't just have to stick to this brand, you could get it from just about anywhere. So you could even put like a surfboard fin, a traditional like touring paddleboard racing fin, all that kind of stuff. Another cool thing that I actually liked about this was that this guy you can actually slide. So if you loosen this, you can bring the fin back or forward. Now, if you bring the fin a little more forward, it gives you a little more maneuverability. Well, if you bring it towards the back, helps it track just a little bit better. Not a major difference. If you're new, you probably won't know the difference, but just every little slight detail helps with this. One last thing I forgot to talk about is the paddle. So what do I think of the paddle? I'll give you a little close-up view right here. If you looked at my on water performance video of the tower, you may notice that this paddle is very similar. Now, I suspect that the people who make the paddles, they got it from the same factory. Don't quote me on that, I don't know. But overall, the paddle is good. It's a bit heavier than the Nixie and the iRocker paddle but it's not a deal breaker. It's definitely better quality than the Serene Life paddle because it's not aluminum. It's made of 
I believe it's made of fiber, no, it's made of carbon fiberglass. This sort of a composite finish, so you can kind of see. So yeah, the paddle's pretty good. First up is the Atoll bag. This is made of heavy duty nylon. There's a little side pocket. This guy has a little instructions manual. It also has a cool little sticker and a little hat coupon. It's pretty cool. I have to get the hat actually. As you can see the backing, there's a nice little chest strap over here, as well as a waist strap. So basically, these straps have a lot of padding on them, so this is great for hiking. Just put it on like so. Chest strap over here you can clip on. Just adjust the weight straps. And then you can, you can go. So this is the improved Atoll paddle. It used to be aluminum, but now it is made of fiber fiberglass wrapped in carbon coating. So it's a three-piece paddle. So to put it together, just simply slide this guy in, watch for this little clip. Put this guy up. And then, I usually go to the max, but the height is obviously up to you and your size. And this little clip allows you to do like so. It's backwards. Just like that. So this paddle is one pound and 13 ounces, and it goes from 66 inches to 86. This is the single chamber dual action pump. So there's this thing that allows you to switch it from single chamber to double chamber. So if you have it down, you pump like this, it will go, it will pump, it'll bring air out, run the down pump and on the up pump. Well, off the one, it's just the down pump. This is the repair kit. So what comes with it is a valve wrench. So this allows you to tighten the valve if it comes loose. Some patches. So this one is aquamarine. So it comes in two different color patches in case you have a hole. And then finally, you have an extra little screw for the fin in case that one gets lost. And a little handle for the pump. Some of the add-ons that you can put onto the Atoll 11 is the kayak conversion seat, where you have the seat and then there's a little paddle as well, where it turns your sub paddle into a kayak paddle. So those straps will go here and there. You can also have different fin setups. So you can do the four inch river fin, you can do the nine inch racing fin. And the accessory that I used to fill this board up is the Outdoor Master Shark 2 pump. Highly recommend getting that pump instead of manually pumping. If you plan to go paddle boarding a lot, Highly recommended. I mean, you're gonna save your back and you just stand around and you let the thing inflate by itself, essentially. Now we're gonna go through the likes and dislikes that I have about the Toll 11. Now, there's a lot of things that I really liked about this board. One of the things that really stood out for me was the stability. There are some boards that are 33 inches, 34 inches, that people say, you know, that's the major range for stability, but this is the 32 inch board. And when I stood on it, it went really well. Like I didn't have any issues balancing or anything like that. I actually paddled in this cold lake and I didn't fall in. So that's enough to be said about that. It's also extremely lightweight. So at 21 pounds, just lift it with one arm, essentially. 
great for hiking. And to add to that stability thing, it's a great, great board for beginners. Especially if this is your first SUP board and you don't want to spend, you know, $800, $900. This is a really good option and I'd probably recommend this over any Amazon style board for sure. And another thing is the D-rings allows you to kind of do it, make it a do-it-yourself board for accessories. So, I mean, like, like I said, I can strap on a bunch of coolers, I can strap on the kayak conversion seat. There's just a lot of good configurations you can do with this board. Now, you'll probably have to get your own bungees, but I mean, if, even if you have those ones that are in your car, no problem. Another few things that I liked is the fact that this board has a pretty big carrying capacity. So you can ideally put two people on there. Maybe not for when you're first beginning, but if this is like a board you just want to fool around with on the lake and just have some kids jumping up and down on it, this is a good board for that. Another few things that I like about the board is the fact that this is probably the best hiking board out there just due to the simplicity of the bag and the lightweight materials that this board is made of. Speaking of materials, there's a lot of customers on Reddit that have said they've had this board for many, many years. Um, the newer models are even more superior because of that dual laminated PVC material that makes it durable. And also the drop stitch is very strong. Now a few things that I think a tool could maybe improve on a little bit compared to maybe some other sub manufacturers is while they have a lot of D-rings for mounting points, there's not a ton of accessories that the company really carries other than some of the accessories I mentioned, like for example, the shark pump, the different fins. Companies like Nixie and iRocker, they have little mounting points over here, 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 and on the back of the boards. So that means that you could mount little cup holders, fishing rod holders, etc. Now, of course, that's not a deal breaker, and now we're really kind of nitpicking on certain little things. But that was just one of the first things that come to mind. But at the same time, if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you kind of like doing your own sort of like shuffling around with the board and making your own little gadgets to keep them on this board, then hey, this is a great board for you for sure.